Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to uh, this workshop. My name is uh, Ptihaj Ajana, and I am a research fellow here at uh, IS, uh, and I'm also a senior lecturer at King's College uh, in London. So I would like to begin by thanking IS for all the support it has provided towards making this workshop happen, uh, and a special thank you to our very extremely competent administrative team for all the hard work and for making the organization of this workshop run very smoothly. So thank you so much. Um, so today we are gathering to think together and talk about uh, a particular phenomenon that has become quite prevalent in recent years. And perhaps you are yourself part of this phenomenon, or perhaps you have noticed on social media that some of your friends or colleagues or family members uh, have a tendency to share information about their physical activity, like the distances they run or the distances they cycled, uh, their body fat percentage or their calories consumed uh, on social media. And this tendency to uh, track, measure, and share data regarding physical activity is precisely the topic of today's uh, workshop. And it is also um, what is being encapsulated through this term, the quantified self, a catchphrase that now is used to describe any form of um, self-quantification and self-tracking through the dedicated apps and available digital devices. Uh, and when initially this term or this, this concept of the quantified self emerged following the setup of a group in California back in 2007 uh, by uh, Gary Wolf and Kevin Kelly from Wired Magazine, the early adopters of this uh, trend and the followers uh, of this group were described uh, in this kind of terms. This is a quote from The Economist as fitness freaks or technology evangelists or personal development junkies or simply patients who are suffering from various uh, health problems. But since then, and almost 10 years later, it seems that uh, this practice of self-tracking and quantification uh, has become quite routine, uh, so ubiquitous, and dare I say, even banal at times. Uh, because now we don't really have to fall into any of this category to be deemed as a self-quantifier. Uh, because the conversions of health apps with uh, mobile devices, it is likely that somebody who is owning uh, and using a, a smartphone, for instance, will be engaged in one form of self-tracking or another. Um, and we can see this, for instance, if you have one of the latest models of iPhone, they do come with built-in uh, apps such as Health, uh, which tracks the user, uh, it tracks its physical acti the physical activity, and sometimes users are not even aware that this is being done. And Apple made it quite hard to actually uninstall. I tried to uninstall my app, uh, this app for my phone, and I wasn't actually successful so far. Um, so really, so this. Uh, kind of the way in which the, the self-tracking uh, practices and habits are actually embedded in everyday products like our smartphones and our watches. What, what this does, it makes them become quite naturalized. They are regarded now as a matter of course. You track as you go, sometimes even passively and automatically. Um, and I think when technological trends and technological developments start to feel natural and obvious and taken for granted, I think this is when it is most important to pause and think about their implications quite critically. This is when it's important to have a critical distance towards this development and engage with them with a level of caution. Uh, but oftentimes, the discussions revolving around uh, the quantified self and uh, the tracking culture in general, what they do, they tend to uh, emphasize and highlight the, the benefits and the value they have vis-a-vis uh, -vis the users and other entities like employers, health insurance, um, healthcare providers, and so on while also sometimes precluding uh, other aspects and some important concerns that are worthy of consideration as well. Most obvious of which are issues to do with privacy, uh, the concerns with data ownership, like who owns that data and with whom that data needs to be shared. 
So therefore, it is the aim of today's workshop to contribute with some empirical and theoretical nuances towards this debate about the quantified self and self-tracking culture. And I am very delighted to be joined by excellent speakers who are really at the forefront of the critical study of self-tracking practices. Uh, and together, what we will try to do is um, discuss some of the relevant issues regarding uh, the quantified self, ranging from um, the effect of self-tracking on understandings and representations of the self and subjectivity, uh, all the way to uh, the dynamics of the quantified self at the workplace and its interplay with neoliberal ethos. And because this is a workshop, so most of the work that will be uh, actually presented is work in progress. So perhaps it will be raising more questions that it is uh, able to answer. But that's the point of having an experimental brainstorming um, events like today's. So I therefore kind of really invite you and encourage you to engage with the speakers, to challenge the speakers, and to share with us your ideas and thoughts and even your experiences. Maybe you are yourself a self-quantifier. So we'd like to hear from you as well. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to uh, welcome our first speaker in the first panel, uh, Paolo Rofino from the University of York in the UK. Paolo. Uh, 